Welcome to section 8.4a. All right, gentle people, let's close out the last three lectures. In the last three lectures, what we were talking about was the titration of a weak acid with a strong base. And so what we wanted to do was produce a pH curve. So at the start of those three lectures, what I asked you guys to do was try to envision and draw out a pH curve. Hopefully you drew something that looks like this. What we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and talk about this a little bit later in more depth, but I want to go ahead and talk about one equation before we get started. All right, gentle people, what I want to talk to you guys about is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. What these two scientists did is they took this equation and rearranged it into this. Now this equation is going to appear on your equation sheet or your info sheet, but I want you guys to know how to use it. So the idea here is that we can calculate the pH of a solution by taking the pKa. The pKa is going to be just the negative log of the Ka. What you guys will note is that right on your Ka tables, right next to the Ka column is the pKa column. So you guys can look up these values. To the pKa, you are going to take the log of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of our acid. Now these are going to be the initial concentrations of our base and our acid. So A minus over HA. So the benefit of using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is you guys can use it instead of an ice table. So if you ever come across doing an ice table for a weak acid, instead what you guys can do is you can use this equation, the Henderson-Hasselbalch. Instead of putting all the initial values for I in your ice table, just plug in those concentrations into this formula. Now there are a couple of stipulations. The first thing is you got to make sure it's a weak acid. The Ka has to be something that is small. The next thing you have to remember is you can only do this so long as you have both A- and HA present. So if you don't have any A- initially, you're going to have to do the ice table. If you don't have any HA present, you're going to have to do the ice table. So this is really useful when you have a buffer solution or using this after you complete your surf table. So once you've done your surf table and you have A- minus and HA present, chuck it into this equation instead of doing an ice table. So let's see some of the nuances that we can pull out of this. So going back to that titration that we were talking about, one of the things that you can recall is that at, at the equivalence point, what you'll note is I have equal moles of acid and base in solution. And because they react completely, all my HA is used up. But remember what's happening to my HA, my weak acid. I'm converting my weak acid into a weak base, A minus. And so what you can say is that at the equivalence point, I only have A minus present. But let's talk about something called the half equivalence point. So the half equivalence point is the amount that I use to get halfway to my equivalence point. So if my equivalence point was 25 mils, my half equivalence point is half of that, so 12.5 mils. Now, if that's the case, that means that I used only half my HA up. If I only used half of my HA and my HA got converted to A minus, well then at half the equivalence point, what I will note is that HA equals A minus. So let's explore our titration curve. So what I want you to do is first focus in on this solid line right here, which is the titration of a weak acid with a strong base. Now what you guys will notice in this particular scenario, my equivalence point is 40 mils. At half my equivalence point, that would be just half that number or 20 mils. Now if I take a look at that, at half the equivalence point, my HA equals my A minus. 
But let's take a look at what happens if I plug this into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. If I'm at half the equivalence point, well, A minus and HA equal each other. So that means that if I do that division of two equal amounts, it becomes one. Now the log of one is zero. And so that means at half the equivalence point, the pH is going to equal the pKa. And that's what you guys will see here. If I were to go ahead and look at the pH at the half equivalence point, it equals 4.89, which happens to be the pKa of this weak acid. Now, what you guys will also note is that if I have HA present and A minus, that means I have a weak acid and it's conjugate present. Well, if I have something that's weak and it's conjugate present, well, that makes a buffer solution. And so what you guys will see in this titration region, there is something called a buffer region. And the buffer region is centered around that half equivalence point. And so that means I have just a very slow, steady rise in my pH, even though I'm adding a strong base. So here are the differences between titrating a strong acid versus a weak acid. So if I look at a weak acid and I look at its pH curve, what I will notice is that the initial pH is higher. So going back to the slide, what you guys will see is there are two curves, the dotted curve right here and then the solid curve right here. Now what you guys will notice is the dotted is a strong acid, solid one is a weak acid. So the first thing you'll note is that the weak acid is going to start out much higher than the strong acid. And this should make sense. A weak acid produces less H+, so it's going to have a higher pH. The other thing that is a difference in these two curves is that there's a buffer region when I'm using a weak acid. So here we have a steady rise in our weak acid where it's going slightly up in pH, whereas the strong acid, I don't really have that rise because the strong is so dominant. Or the last difference I want you to note is that when you use a weak acid, the pH at the equivalence point is going to be greater than 7. So if we look at the equivalence point for these two things, the dotted one, here's my equivalence point at 7. And so remember, a strong, strong titration, the equivalence point is at, is at 7. But if you have a weak acid and a strong base, the pH at the equivalence point is going to be higher than 7. So let's go ahead and practice using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation out. So what I want you to do is assume that I have acetic acid, which has a Ka of 1.76 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 0.1 equivalence of OH minus. And what I mean by that is if I had one molar acetic acid, my concentration of OH is going to be 0.1. If I had 10 molar acetic acid, well then, I'm going to add 10% in NaOH versus my acetic acid. So I want you to run this calculation out using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. All right, gentle people, let's go ahead and tackle this problem out. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and identify what type of problem we're doing. So we have this weak acid and we're adding a strong base to that. So this is a weak, strong interaction. For a weak, strong interaction, I wanna do a surf table first and then I wanna do an ice table. Now what I told you guys is that the Henderson-Hasselbalch can be used instead of an ice table and that's what we're practicing. So instead of an ice table, we're gonna do the Henderson-Hasselbalch. So let's go ahead and run through this two-step problem. So the reaction that I'm interested in is acetic acid plus OH minus gets me CH3OO minus plus H2O. And so like I mentioned before, we're gonna start out with our surf table. So now we have to plug in our values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that my acetic acid is going to be 1 
0.1 equivalence of OH is going to be 0.1. And then I have no acetate and water is something that I don't care about. So I'm gonna do my reaction. So I'm gonna look for my limiting reagent. This happens to be my limiting reagent. So minus 0.1 minus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1. And so this becomes 0.9, this becomes a zero, this becomes 0 0.1. Now what you guys will notice is even though that the surf table is in moles, you guys can plug moles directly into the henderson hasselbach equation so long as everything is in the same container. And since I put in 0.1 equivalent into the same beaker, I can plug these values into my henderson hasselbach equation. So after completing that surf table, I'm gonna grab my henderson hasselbach equation. I'm gonna plug in those values. So acetate was 0.1. HA acetic acid was 0.9. I can go ahead and look up the pKa, or I can go ahead and take the negative log of this Ka to get the pKa. Either way, I get 4.76. I can evaluate my log, and now I get a pH of 3.81. Hopefully what you guys can see is this is a lot easier to do instead of an ice table. So you can run the henderson hasselbach instead of setting up that ice table. So I want to have a summary slide for you guys. So these are all the things that we have talked about thus far, buffers and titrations. If you guys want, you guys can print this out and use this on your exam. The most important thing that you guys have to do is identify which problem you have and then you can figure out which method you want to use. If you have a buffer, that means that you have something that's weak with its conjugate, you guys can do an ice table where you set up the equilibrium according to that weak entity. If you have a buffer and you add something strong to it, well, first you're going to run through a surf table, and then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to do an ice table, and you're going to use the weak entity as the equilibrium in your ice table. If you are doing a titration and both things are strong, just do a surf table. If you have a titration with something that is weak, with something that is strong, there are three different scenarios you have to worry about, before, at, and after the equivalence point. In each one of these, you are gonna start out doing a surf table. Now, after you do your surf table, you gotta decide what to do. If you are before the equivalence point, ice table with the weak thing as the equilibrium. If you are at the equilibrium, ice table, but you're gonna use the conjugate this time as the equilibrium. And then if you're after, you don't have to do an ice table. Now, instead of doing an ice table, what you guys can do is you guys can use the henderson hasselbach equation. Again, the stipulation, make sure your weak thing has a small Ka, and make sure that HA and A are present. So just as a general rule, you can probably use the henderson hasselbach with this ice table, with this ice table, and with this ice table. It's real unlikely you can use the henderson hasselbach with this ice table, I don't think there's any way getting around it. You have to do the ice table for at the equivalence point with a weak, strong titration. Well, I hope that made sense. And remember to stay safe, Chem1B.